Welcome to Hardfire TV. My name is Cameron Weber. Thank you for watching our program. Today we're going to talk about the New York City Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. The city gives about $750 million in subsidies every year for people to produce film and television in New York City. Film and television. Specifically, we're going to talk about how these subsidies go to large corporations and other insiders and are economically damaging to everyone else. To help me discuss this situation, I welcome to Hardfire Ken Stevenson. Ken, welcome to Hardfire. Hi, Cameron, man. It's good to be on your show. Good to see you again. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, Ken is an independent producer, right? And general manager of the entertainment group based in New York City. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we've, been, uh, we've been doing what we do now since... 2013, that makes us, what, 11 years old, right? There's also uh, the entertainment group in London. Did you know that? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple, but we go by, we're the entertainment group U.S. Cool, yeah. So that's the yeah, official yeah. name, entertainment group U.S. Yeah, right. 11, uh, 11, 11 years, right? You said you've been doing this. You and I met at the uh, Brick. Brick the producer uh, training class exactly which which they're in dire need of some of that 750 they mm -hmm. could definitely use that you know yeah something like that right right so uh was that 11 years ago that you and i had that it was it was 2013 so 2013 is uh nine is that nine years or that's 11 years ago yeah 10 years i bet so i've made 75 shows i, I haven't uh oh, wow made 75 hard fire shows since then a month Monthly, monthly program. That's 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 actually great. I've made, uh, I've done plenty of shows, but not one, not seventy five or one particular show. Uh, yeah, we've got I've got a new venture that we can re embark on. We I guess we can talk about it a little later. Uh, yeah, yeah. You the last we talked, you were making a film and looking. You needed. Yes, we finished the movie. We finished the movie and uh, we started the shopping process. Actually, got uh, got a few offers, but I decided to uh, flip the page and we're going to we're going to launch a channel on Roku, Apple TV, uh, Amazon Prime, mobile, and uh, and on the TV. So we're excited about that. We're filming. Like I was in the studio last night. We're filming like crazy. Trying to get our content together because we want to. I want to launch with at least thirty shows, fifteen movies, fifteen okay. original shows. So uh, you've been buying a lot of technical equipment to. Uh, that. Well, you know what we do. You know, yeah, yeah. it's like the, the 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 pure the pure love for the art of yeah, filmmaking. People can find you at uh, the entertainment group. Yeah, you can, you, you can find us at Tejas TV. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Great, that's good to know. And do, do you get any uh, money from the mayor's office? I, I got to be honest with you, Cam. I didn't know it was available, but uh, I will be knocking on the door now that you made me aware of it. And here's a, that's the strange thing. You know Mayor Adams has actually been on our show when we filmed in Brick, when he was the borough president. Really? So, and when he originally took office, he reached out to say, hey, guys, 
let's make a time to come in and talk about what we can do. And, and of course, um, we never followed through. We didn't follow through on that so much. So I kind of wish I would have. But it's not too late, you know. No, 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 no. no. Uh, right. So do let me know about how uh, how onerous the process is to apply for that stuff. That Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, anything dealing with the government is usually a pain. About, and it's, it's, it's I believe, uh, this a pain for the quote-unquote average guy uh, because of for the person that needs the money the most. Uh, and that's what kind of justifies for the cities, the state, and the government and those foundations to give it to a larger. And well, they're more qualified. They've got everything in, in order. Reality is they don't. So, example. I'm filming now, we're filming like crazy. Biggest issue I have now is finding facilities to film in. So I've been filming out of MNN in the city. They've got a couple of locations. They've got a new location on 38th Street, which where I was at last night. And then they've got the Harlem location, which is a phenomenal studio. I have never seen, I went over there and I was like, well, I didn't even know this was here. But what they do is they shut the studio down in July and August and they make it available to two high school students that are coming in for those two months. So it is not available to any producers. So we scramble trying to book time. So I mean, we, we, we pro on average, I get like one one time slot per month. That I remember that was your complaint about the brick studios that had to, you could only get two hours in and, and you would always try different formats so you could never we, we, we circumvent and we got three producers together and we blocked out a time right. and then for, so i would film all my shows and then when they needed to film we do the same thing so we work together so each producer would take their three hour blocks and we would just work together and are you still doing that at brick or no i have not i'm filming in the city i live in the city now and i haven't i have not and you know funny leon uh you remember leon he he <laughs> He, he was over m and in, in Manhattan. When I joined there, I went there. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing here? He said, listen, this is my last week here. I'm going back to Brooklyn. So he's now back in Brooklyn. I now, in yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So let's talk about the, the mayor's office and maybe we'll get, get some... Uh, let's do. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with some basic information. New York City's okay. Office of uh, Media and... Uh, Media and entertainment has a, or the mayor's office itself has a $104 billion budget, or about 13000 per person for the 8 million of us in New York City. The mayor's office of media and entertainment manages about $750 million in subsidies, or about 100, person, 100 per person for those of us living in New York City. The way the subsidy pro process works is to simplify a very complicated process. Ken will be finding out, I think. If a company films 75% of their footage in the city or spends 75% of their pre- or post-production costs in the city, then they get a reduction in the taxes they have to pay. Right? So that's how it works. You have to account for and, and do the 75% above line, below line, and then fill out forms to do it, and then use their certified studios to do it. And even you have an option of using their accountant to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's, it's, I'm glad to hear that because I would think that M um, and in the public access is probably their studios, right? That has to be one of their certified studios. Yeah, so I do. I film a hundred percent. Well, eighty, ninety percent. I'm filming the studio. So I'm glad you just, you just, my friend, you just got me to make a few phone calls tomorrow. <laughs> you made your, you made your visit to our show worthwhile. Appreciate that. Absolutely. So what, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put up a, a chart of, uh, from, from the mayor's office of who gets the subsidies, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look at the subsidies. Hopefully Ken Stevenson and Teg will get the uh, Teg. We'll, we'll, we'll move up in the line, hopefully. Here's, here's who gets them now. The Walt Disney Company, Comcast, Viacom, AT&T, Disney, Hearst Publishing, NBC, CBS, ABC, AMC, HBO, Disc... Cinemax, I have to see the list, the, the list, right? So these, these are large corporations that are getting tax breaks from New York tax. How can you not have a small independent filmmaker in that group? And just, it doesn't even sound right. I mean, none of those companies need that money. Yeah, well, that, they call that the landscape. 
So that's what they, they it is. It's big, it's big players, right? And it's, and it's re uh, remakes. Unbelievable. And, and, and really, well, you, if you're going to keep it real, uh, they're doing that to keep those companies doing business in New York City. They have a higher tax basis, so obviously they'll make more money with them doing business than a small guy that really needs it. Um, right. Uh, yeah. How how we how we get around that? I think we just have to shine the light on the situation. That's what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, sure. So it's the establishment media corporations who receive the tax breaks. Mm -hmm. We can, we can't say these tax breaks are going to starving or breaking artists, right? Which right. You, purpose of uh, listen? You have you have to make money to pay taxes, right? And most starving artists aren't making money. Let's just keep it real. Uh, most got most companies are losing. I've, I've Going, I've been self-funding uh, for the majority of 13 years. Uh, I've just now got around to where I'm selling advertising uh, for the site, uh, so that that'll bring in some revenue. And then once we, once we, advertising on our YouTube channel for Hard Fire, we, we have been getting advertising, and but I haven't right. got checks. Yet. You haven't got any money yet, right? Yeah. No. But once the, the money arrives, then what we're going to do is throw a party for everyone that's uh, up here. Exactly. Take, take a picture. Cash that check fast. <laughs> Cash it fast. Because what the way my understanding is, it'll be this when we launch, they, there's a third party ad agency that uh, will ask us if, we, if they can run ads around our more popular shows. Uh, and we have the ability, I'm setting up an in house ad, ad department everything for you that will connect you yeah they would take it more than just the youtube ads. absolutely absolutely to... absolutely we're gonna sell our own ads right uh, by, by selling our own ads we can we can ensure when we when we sit across from a client we can say hey we can make sure that you get the visibility that you want on our channel uh, we'll put you on all, all the shows <laughs> you know it's like so it but, gives us gives us a little more freedom any stages of production is possible in-house yes yeah. Yes, all of, all of our well, fifty uh, at to launch fifty percent of our productions are in house. What I'm doing is I'm reaching out to movie makers that have made films and are trying to shop it to get them to. We're, we're doing agreements with them to come on our platform. We split whatever profit we get uh, that way, so they have and they have that worldwide platform to operate for. You're doing this without subsidies, I guess is my point. Exactly, exactly. I'm doing it with, like I said, we, we're, we're hitting the concrete, going out, finding advertising. I'm really calling on the clients that I've been knowing for years. Listen, man, I need... We, we, you and I have been working together for, would be determined, 10 years. So let, let, yeah. let's, let's move on to now why these subsidies are something economists call regressive policy. Because the program transfers public resources from less wealthy to more wealthy people. That's what we've been talking about. The, the average income in New York City is 91000 per year, and the average salary for those working in the, the mayor's office of media is 121000 So people making 91000 are paying extra taxes for those making 121000 or 33% more. So that's, that's regressive policy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think that's fair or, or equi equitable? Uh, it, none of this is fair, if you ask me. Um, and really, I think I think um, what would really be, I think, uh, and I don't know how it could happen. Uh, I, I recently ran across um, in my office building. There's a, an accountant, and uh, we just happened to. I see her a lot, and we just happened to talk. And she told me that she was on third time. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was on the board of a foundation that made sure that ethnic groups got proper funding. And so they have a group of people that they present a project to, to give them almost like a crowdfunding where this group will actually fund the, the project. And I'm thinking, boy, it'd be nice if we had a group like that, not to fund the project, but to represent us with the city and all of these, uh, these with some attorneys that can give us a voice uh, and really soften the um, the qualifications to getting access to this money to eliminate from all the big companies. It should be it should be just like uh, remember the um, 
uh, what's the thing we had a big uproar around, especially being a minority when they when they changed that, where they had to allocate a certain percentage of that money to, and that's where it needs to be. A certain percentage of that money should be allocated to a small filmmaker that can prove and justify that they've been doing this yeah. as opposed to the 100% to the big guys. Right, so the, seven, you're saying the $750 million that goes to AT&T could be better spent yeah. elsewhere. And it, should, it, should, it should be it should be here. Okay, so Ken, you and I were, uh, before we were so rudely interrupted, we were talking about the re redistribution and upwards of uh, the mayor's office subsidies for for media and then <clears throat> you were you were saying that there would be there's better possibilities for that 750 million dollars and to be used to artists who uh, aren't as successful as those who receive the monies now right exactly and, and this i'm not talking about a hundred percent access of it but we split it down percentages 50 percent to big corporations 50 percent to a, a legitimate filmmaker that needs it and put a criteria together for a legitimate filmmaker to have to uh, meet for them to get access to. Everybody was was fighting to give the world's richest person subsidy. Exactly, exactly. it's amazing. And then uh, Long Island City voted it down, and now you got a bunch of empty apartments over there. And the crazy thing, Cam, is they're sitting there empty. And I just happened to inquire, and they still want five and six thousand dollars a month. Or empty building. It's like, God, it's what's going on. Here. It's easy money. We got, it's we got amazing <laughs> easy money. Uh, and well, and the same thing, uh, same corporate cronyism down down here in Sunset Park, where they all the uh, waterfront shipping buildings they have given over to Amazon for 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 distro centers at uh, subsidized rates driving out small businesses you know those big beautiful buildings could have been converted into stu studio space had they had not been given by the city to to amazon Unbelievable. and again let's just do a percentage of those buildings a percentage of that area you know if you just listen we're not if you start with just giving a percentage what you do is you'll keep the integrity of neighborhoods you'll keep the integrity of cultures you you keep it, and it will be fair, and everybody will benefit. That 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 type of the cronyism in Sunset Park is crowding out uh, more housing, which is what we need. So I wanted I wanted to put put up another graph, um, okay. which shows. So right, right now you and I, the average taxpayer or average person in New York City, are paying taxes for people who make 33 percent more than us on those pro uh through the mayor's office but and if you look at private employers only they're making 50 percent more than other private employer employees make. and uh so that well that means that the city employees and state and federal employees make more money than the private sector employees which also helps explain the growth of the state and then, and then, and then, if you look at the uh, New York State tax as as the as the state, right. then New York State is paying people in New York State are paying eighty three percent more for those that are on the subsidies. And if you look at the, the United States, the average person in the United States is the person in New York City on the subsidies making twice as much as those in New York City, which which is, cannot be a good thing. And and the reason the reason I use the federal deficit spending. Uh, United States as an example, because there was such great spending during COVID and since then. So maybe at the federal level is one way to look at it. Political cronyism and, and $750 million as an example in the mayor's media office. And you say that it'd be better to give it to, not to the more wealthy, but to those lower on the economic scale, which and make it a, not a regressive policy, but a progressive policy, I think is what we've agreed to. Yeah, and then, and then to take it even a step farther, um, I'm okay with just doing a 50-50 split. Let let the large companies take 50% of that allocated money and then just keep 50% for the people that really need it, that the independent filmmaker, the people in New York City. That's is really uh, what I call 
culture and the background of the entertainment industry in New York City is an independent filmmaker. Okay, the, the, New, York, the New York film and TV subsidies are pro, part of the program Made in New York. If the program was really meant to create equity, then the subsidies would go to places in New York State which are poorer rather than richer. This would be, this would be progressive policy, not regressive policy. It, it is easy to understand why I think these types of programs continue despite their regressive nature. First, those paying for, paying for the program, the outsiders, you and me, only pay around $100 per year, while those gaining the insiders gain a lot more than that. They get, that. So the insiders have the incentive and ability. Oh, okay. There's another reason we can use from sociology. Engagement with the arts Politicians gain social distinction from their public interaction with artists, and artists gain distinction from their social interactions with politicians. Interesting. You know, um, people just don't understand. Since I, I'm, I'm, I'm from the Midwest, and since I moved to New York, uh, just understanding the culture here and how culture, so culturally rich this city is, uh, and how arts and entertainment is like the fabric, the backbone of the city, and how they've allowed gradually over the years big companies to come in and just tear away, tear away, tear away, tear away, until eventually it's going to be gone. You, you want an independent filmmaker, when he makes a film, is showing the richness and the true culture of the city. When a big company from Hollywood comes in, you lose it's watered down. You don't get that. Such a huge loss. Uh, it's amazing, man. It just, it just it, 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 right. That, that, that is a, that's a common finding in economics, too, that all this easy money to places like the Olympics and, and things like that destroys the local, local culture. Listen, it's, it's no different than people's complaint about welfare. If you give them money, they're not going to go out and do the work. It's the same thing when you give rich companies money, they're not going to take the time to invest into making a film or, or keeping the integrity of a project. It's the same, it works the same way. <laughs> so the quality of the art goes down with the subsidies, yes. If, if you're giving it, then you don't, you don't get that satisfaction of knowing. Right. I did, I made this. It becomes a job and an occupation. We have a whole department for that. Yes, to do. <laughs> and, and that's how America was created. <laughs> and listen, you're meant right. We were talking about why these programs continue. We were talking about distinction. Your, your mental state, your, your confidence, your, your, your being of being right. And you lose the integrity. Integrity is so important. And because it, it keeps, when you, when you ride, if you've ever driven cross country and you go to Yellowstone Park, the age of those trees, the big Yellowstone, you know, the big, uh, the big, uh, the huge trees that you can drive through, it's the same thing when you allow a person from a particular area and culture create a project. It's going to feed more rich. It's going to have the integrity and it's going to have the true feel of the project. If you got somebody coming from the outside, they're never going to be able to capture. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. So now what happens with these big companies, instead of them saying, let's get access to this money and let's pour it back in there. No, let's get access to this and let's fund this project over here. And we'll just do something over here to, to appease them. It comes from the streets. The true creator comes from the street. It comes from the individual. It doesn't come from the company. Right. You need, uh, like you said, the subsidies create conservative art and you need groundbreaking. And so that, that's the problem when, when then... W would you rather be doing that or would you rather be filling out forms for subsidies? You know, corporations have pe people to fill out forms for they pay up pay attorneys that probably got a whole department. If you got 750 million, a billion dollars, somewhere, you're going to have a department, you can afford to have a department to do nothing but go find this money. <laughs> you know? Uh, great. So, Ken, it's been good to we've got about one minute left, a couple minutes left. It's been great to talk to you about the artistic process and the uh necessary integrity and how that doesn't work in the subsidy process and how the money is regressive. It's been a very interesting uh, show for 30 minutes. Thank you. Uh, so let us know how the subsidy process works and share it with us if you'd like. Thank you for making me aware of this. And I will definitely 
make sure to keep you in the loop as I find information so you can forward the information. Great. Uh, I'd like to thank Ken Stevenson for participating in today's discussion, for taking the time to be on camera with his uh, busy producer's schedule. It's a media company. It's more than a, a television. It's, you, uh, yeah. Ken, well, okay. So we learn about your work from tagusa.com. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching Hardfire. Each of our episodes appears six times monthly on the Brooklyn Free Speech Network, both on cable in New York City and streaming through the Brick Arts Media House. As we discussed, we have more than 75 programs about classical liberal ideas on our YouTube channel. Just search for Hardfire TV and Brooklyn Free Speech. Thank you, everyone.